Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my WordPress theme tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you numerous ways to manipulate post and page data using the tools provided through the WordPress framework. Many of you have sent me notes asking me why these tutorials always start out kind of boring. And the reason why is I truly believe it's only by mastering the boring aspects of a tool that you truly master that tool. And that's my quote. I don't believe I borrowed that from anybody. And also, I also make these tutorials a bit boring at first just to weed out those people people who are just looking for quick fixes. What I have here on the screen on the left side is index.php. And over here on the right side, I dumped in some recipes into my WordPress blog that I have hosted on my local host. And definitely, if you haven't watched part one of this tutorial series, you should check that out. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can specify specific attributes that will affect the query results with a function called query posts. And here I'm going to use the same exact sort of layout that is used inside of WordPress by putting all my PHP calls all on separate lines. And here here is the query posts function. And all this code is available in a link in the underbar if you want it and if you want to use this as a cheat sheet. So if I want to just put out, say, two posts on the screen, this is exactly what I do. If I file save that, jump over here, you're going to see that only two posts showed up. So that's a nice little way to play around with this. And I'm going to leave everything here exactly the same. And I'm only going to change what is inside of this area. So you can also specifically target IDs and only show those posts that fit certain IDs by using P is equal to 46, for example. And if we reload that, you can see that it just showed the one jalapeno red bean burger on the screen over here on the right side of the screen. So that's how you target those guys. And another way you can do that is through what's called page underscore ID. So I'm just setting different variables and it is performing those actions for me. There's no reason to run that though because it's going to give me exactly the same results. I could also say that I just want to show pages. How I would do that is by setting post type equal to page and in this situation it's only going to pop up those things that are pages on the right side of the screen here. And I could also come in here and target very specific page names. And here I'm going to target sample page. And if you know PHP, you can start to see how this becomes extremely powerful in being able to manipulate multiple different pieces of data inside of here in WordPress. And I could also say, for example, that I only want to see all of those posts that lie after the fifth post. And you can also manipulate these guys and have multiple options all show up at the same time. But I would just want to show you pretty much every single way you can pull different types of information. And here I'm going to pull just everything that shows up in the category named recipes and it will do that for me. You can see that's a big long list since I have a couple recipes inside of this WordPress site that I have here on my local computer. You can also target very specific tags. So if I only want recipes that contain eggplant, it will give me just those recipes that contain eggplant. And as you can see, if we zoom in here, eggplant right here. And I could also come in here and to find that I want anything that contains eggplant or onions, for example. This comma here represents or, and I can reload it, and it's going to show me everything that contains eggplants or onions. And if I wanted to return things that contain eggplant and onions, I would put a plus sign inside of there. I could also bring back everything that was of an author named admin. That's the only thing I got here, so I can't really do anything else. And that's going to bring back every single one of these posts since I made every single one of them. And I can also bring in here everything that was made in a specific month. So since I just started this guy, I'm just going to start here with April. And that's going to show me nothing because it's not the third, it's the fourth month. Sorry about that. And now you can see that every single one of them popped up. And I could also pull up every single post that was created in specific years. And I could also show every post that was made on a specific day, right like that. I could also define that I want all of these guys to show up in a very specific order by typing in order by equal to title. And by default, it actually shows these things in descending order, which is kind of weird. But if you'd like to be able to show them in ascending order, which makes a little bit more sense, just come in here and define by putting and inside of here. And that's how you would look for more than one of these guys at the same time. So here I'm going to say order by title, but I want these to go in ascending order. If we do that, 
you can see that they are now alphabetized and come in the proper order that we're looking for. And you could also come in here and instead change this to DSC, and that would show them all in descending order. And here I'll show you another way to say, for example, show posts per page. And you can define how many posts you want to show up per page. And I'm going to put a five inside of there and then put an and sign. And then I'm going to leave everything else exactly the same. And if I save that, you can see that it put them in descending order and it's only going to show five per page, which is all kind of neat. Well, you can also retrieve data from the database using a function called get posts. And what this will do is issue a query for a very, very custom list. So let's say, for example, we just get this right out of here altogether. I wanted to list, say, 10 posts and I want to order them alphabetically before I start listing all of the other posts on my screen. How exactly would I do that? So I'm gonna come in here and type PHP, and I'm gonna call this post titles is equal to get posts. Here's the function that I was talking about before. And I'm gonna say posts per page is equal to 10. And I wanna order by title, and I wanna set my order equal to ascending order so that it makes more sense to me. And then don't forget to close off the end of that PHP tag right there. And then just to reiterate, what this is gonna do is it's gonna list 10 titles that link to posts that fit all of these requirements. You're gonna see it here on the screen for just a second. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cycle through all the qualifying results based off of that query right there with a for each loop. So I'm gonna make another PHP call, put for each inside of here and post titles as, and I'm just going to put post inside of here, colon. And just to keep this neat, I'm going to say set post data. And the reason why you have to use this is some post related data isn't available whenever you use the get post method. So you have to make a call to this set up post data function to resolve that issue. And at this point in time, there's really no reason to go more into that. It just sort of provides you access that you previously wouldn't have. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of HTML inside of here. And then yes, you can make PHP calls inside of here. And then I'm going to make a call to the URL for each one of these posts. Close that off and then make another PHP call and associate that reference to each one of those posts with a title. And after you get really good at doing this sort of stuff, you can pretty much do anything you could ever imagine with WordPress. And I need to end my for each loop and just with that little bit of code, I'm going to save it and reload it. And you can see that it went and printed the top 10 titles that link to posts right there on the screen. You can also make multiple different calls using the WordPress loop. So these could, these could actually show up in your sidebar. They could show up in little divs inside of your main window area. That's why people were able to pull in all this different information and have it all over the screen in multiple different orders. And it really helps you organize your site all together. But of course, if you didn't like that, you could of course come in here and maybe put an H3 tag around this guy or whatever you'd like to do or use CSS to make those guys bigger. And there you can see that they came in there much larger if you'd want to do that, which kind of looks god awful ugly now that I think about it. But either way, I'm actually going to delete out almost all of this information, meaning the whole entire loop and everything else. And I'm going to show you exactly how to actually make your own WP query object, which is the guy that rolls over everything inside of the loop. Well, now you're going to make your own custom one and do really cool things with it. Now, the first thing that I want to be able to do here is create a temporary file and store the current WP query inside of that because we might need that in some other part of the web page. So if we want to reset it, but we want to be able to do what I want to do here, I need to masquerade and act as if I am WP query. And there I'm going to nullify it now. And then I'm going to create a new WP query object. And yes, it's normally frowned upon to come in and change global objects or variables of any type. But this is considered pretty common practice inside of WordPress. This isn't something that I invented. This is something that's used a lot. And then here, this is going to allow me to create custom queries using the query function that's inside of WP Query. And how I do that is going WP Query dash and then that bracket followed by query the name of this guy and let's say i want to define posts per page equal to five again and order by title 
and set the order again equal to ascending and then you have to tack on the paged variable and what this value is equal to is whatever the value of the current page is and you put this on here so that whenever you come in here later on like down here at the very bottom of the screen it says older entries and new well it'll say newer entries if you would click on this but whenever you do that it needs to know what page you came from and what page you currently are on to be able to tell what's new or what's old so that's what's stored in that variable called paged and close that guy off and here I'm going to create a while loop WP query and I'm gonna call half posts just like before kinda cool and the reason why this is still all pink is I didn't put a closing quote inside of there. And here, kind of like before, I'm going to go ah reference is equal to the permalink. Then make another PHP call. And don't forget, close off that tag right there. And then spit out the title using the title function. And then make another PHP call. And this time, I want to get the content from the post and then call end while so that it cycles through all of the posts that match my query that I created here. And then I'm gonna come in here, create a div. Actually, I should have just not deleted the previous version of this guy. And this guy is exactly the same as the one that comes in WordPress. So I'm gonna jump over and actually grab that. Got it, cut and pasted that in there. Like I said, that's in the regular version of WordPress inside of index.php. And then after I'm done borrowing the WP query object, I want to make any type of calls or queries to the database, I'm going to reset this guy. And eventually, I'm going to start making pages that make multiple calls to the loop. And I just go and say, hey, Tim, I need all them values back. And it gives them back to me. And if I file save that and reload it, you can see that it jumped in there. And it's going to give me exactly what I asked for. Five per page, all titled alphabetically right there on the screen. And you can see here are older entries. And then if I scroll down, it's going to show newer entries. And that is all for today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.